Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is Cynthia, and I'd like to welcome you to Sister to Sisters, ladies and gentlemen, the forum where we share stories that will uplift and inspire and encourage. I'd like to welcome my guest today. I'd like to welcome on my right, we've got Miss Gloria, and to my left, we've got Miss Shakea. Ladies and gentlemen, you are going to hear stories of survival, of how these young ladies have overcome losing a child or several children. I'll begin my story with Miss Shakea. Shakea, can you just tell me a little bit about yourself and your story? I have not been a stranger to losing people. Um, my mother passed when I was 13, and the first time that I decided to try to bring life, um, I was 19, had a baby, and he lived for five months. Um, so yeah, I'm familiar with loss on a very personal, intimate level. Okay. okay. What is it, share your story with our viewers so mm -hmm. they can understand what it is that you've gone through as oh, well. okay. Well, God blessed me with seven children. And of the seven, four have died. My house caught on fire in 1973 and two of my daughters died in that fire and then uh, many years later my 28 year old daughter married and living in Indianapolis was on her way home on a um, snowy kind of slick night and she was hit by a drunk driver she was in her truck the truck went into a spin and she was thrown from the truck to the street and um, she lived to the next day and um, I unplugged the machine for, and she died. And then <laughs> two years ago, my 36-year-old daughter, mother of four children, married, um, lost a six-year battle with cancer, and she died. And all of these are, all these deaths are around the same time of year, March and April, right in there. So you can imagine, I'm not glad to see March <laughs> come, but um, God has, has, has sustained me through the death of my four daughters. I, I have two sons and a daughter still living and my husband gave me two daughters when we got married. So we have five children. Well, they're not children anymore. Some of them are grandmothers, but. <laughs> <laughs> Praise God for that. Yes. Um, when you suffered your loss, your first loss, what emotions did you identify with that you were going through? And there, there's so many different ones for every individual, but what did you notice that you went through? Because my house caught on fire, we did not have a place to live, and um, the baby died that same day. She died in the fire. But the four-year-old lived uh, for five, five days. She lived, um, in fact, we had gotten to the point where we thought she was going to survive. But then um, uh, she died. What emotion? I felt guilt. 
because I took the responsibility of taking care of my children on me. And I felt lost, and I felt hurt, and I felt pain, and all, all my emotions ran the gamut. And the, I can remember moving in with uh, a friend of mine because we didn't have any place to go. And um, she opened up her home and we stayed there. I was running back and forth to the hospital because my four-year-old was still living and, and it was just a, a terrible, terrible, hectic time. And I don't think I actually had the opportunity to wallow in self-pity or feel like, oh, woe is me, because it was, there was just too much going on. I can remember um, one of my husband's family members came to see me. And when I got to the door, she met me with, oh, I'm so sorry, okay? And my first response was to put my arms around her and comfort her. And not until it was over and, and she had left, she was an older lady. And after she left, I said, I thought it was kind of comical, which is strange, but I, I said, you know, she came to see me to comfort me and I ended up having to comfort her because she, it was hard for her to deal with. And I think that's, 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 that's been my, 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 my way of coping has been to be the strong one, you know, and, and when I fold or, or when I cry or when I hurt, I'm, it's me and the Lord. But I think the best thing that came out of that was the determination to love the Lord. Amen. Because it is in the death of my two babies. They died in March. Well, one died in March and one died in April. End of March, early April. And the The Sunday morning that my four-year-old died, I went home from the hospital, put on my clothes, and went to church and gave my heart to the Lord. And he's had it ever since. Amen. And that was in 1973. Okay. I pose that same question to you. What emotions were you experiencing when you suffered your loss? Um, so, you know how they say life is better understood in reverse? Like, that, that's the, the space that I can see in now mm -hmm. to even be able to answer this question because when I was in those moments, um, I think that my defense mechanism was to remove myself of emotion. Um, when my mother passed, I don't think that I allowed myself to feel anything. Um, I'm the oldest of her children, and so there was some responsibility there. Um, and <clears throat> in order for me to keep going, mm -hmm. I didn't feel a thing. And so, um, later on in life when my child passed, I was a little bit better equipped to deal with that than the other people okay. close to that. Mm -hmm. um, but still I wasn't coping. I was concealing, right? Mm -hmm. Because in my mind, if I fed into my emotions, I was going to break. And the only thing that I knew was I can't do that. People are counting on me. And like she said, you find yourself in space where 
you would think that people would comfort you, but they need you. And, and it was that for me. Like, my son's father was not okay, and he had never been in that space before. And so I felt like I had to be strong for, always having to be strong for. Um, so yeah, my, my emotions that I felt none, and that became an issue. It wasn't an issue until it became an issue, but I definitely understand that when you think that you're burying things or you're trying to ignore them that you're not and that they're festering and that they're there and that they have to be addressed. Um, I started to feel resentful, anger. Um, oftentimes I would say like, why me? Like, you know how they say God doesn't put more on you than you can bear. And I'm like, well, at what point was somebody going to give me the cue that I'm supposed to be this strong? Mm -hmm. But again, in hindsight, you say, I could say, why me? But I'm better off saying, why not? Because everybody goes through something. Mm -hmm. And so if these are my cards, then you deal with them, right? Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Anger, <laughs> frustration, resentment, um, I felt alone. I self-isolate. Mm -hmm. And all of those emotions that I thought I didn't experience coming to the surface are what encouraged me to seek a better understanding of my relationship with God and what was all available to me to help myself feel again. Because I didn't feel a thing on purpose, null and void. Mm -hmm. I think sometimes as we as women, we're so used to taking care of everyone else and in, in, the, in the fashion that you both have experienced loss of children, you still have to go on and as you said, you are to be comforted but you find yourself comforting others who are experiencing your loss with you but not to the degree that you both have. Um, let me ask you this question, Shakea. How did you, how did others handle being in your presence? Because as people love us, they want to comfort us, they want to be there for us. Did you allow people to, in, in your circle, to be there for you? I needed them. Okay. Yeah. If it, if it wasn't for my friends and my family, I wouldn't have been okay. Um, when my mom died, I was in that eighth grade and I needed to go back to school. I was going crazy. <laughs> I didn't want to sit at home alone. Um, yeah, I, I needed people. I don't care if you just came over and sat with me, you know what I mean? I don't necessarily want to talk, but I don't want to be by myself. Yeah. Okay, thank you. And Gloria, for yourself, the same question. Did you find yourself alienating or were you embracing those individuals that were seeking to comfort you? Because we have a tendency to push people away when we're going through our, 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 our set of circumstances. So how did you, or did you, embrace or push away? I think mostly I was embraced and um, having to move in with, for the two babies, having to move in with someone else. She had a husband, she had two sons, and um, they're, they're reaching out to me. Mm -hmm. And um, people would call and, 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 and ask how you're doing, and, and do, what do you need, and, and those kinds of things. And, and, and I didn't want to be needy. I didn't want to be pitiful. I didn't want, you know, um, in my studies, I had learned that God would not send anything that was too hard for us to bear. Mm -hmm. And so I, hold, I held on to those promises. Um, um, and, and like I said, my, my immediate response was to go, to go to God, go to my father. 
my heavenly father. And I can remember sweeping or cleaning and, and singing, tis so sweet to trust in Jesus. That was my go-to. Mm -hmm. and, and, and so people didn't see me broken. I did have times when it was hard, but I would sing. Mm -hmm. I'd grab my Bible because all my life I had been taught that Jesus is the answer. And so I tried him, and he was faithful. Amen. And, and I'm still trying him. Amen. <laughs> and he's still faithful, you know. <laughs> so that, that, that was how I managed. Um, I felt guilt because I, I was supposed to take care of my, daughter, my children, you know, my daughters. Mm -hmm. I felt um, responsibility because I still had two mm -hmm. that I needed to take care of. Um, just all over the place sometimes, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. Okay, let me ask you this question, Shakea. Now, when, when you lost your son, you didn't have any other children. What did that do to you <laughs> as far as being able to m mentally say that I, I do want to have another child or I don't want to have another child? Um, initially, I blamed myself. Um, I thought that something was wrong with me or that I was being punished. Um, I didn't really understand, again, why I was chosen for this walk. But, um, <laughs> you know what really happened? I was talking to my baby's specialist. And after all of the tests and all of the trying to pinpoint what the issues were, there, there was never a clear answer. And he said, out of my 20 years of being a physician, I'm going to tell you that sometimes stuff happens. And unfortunately, something happened to you. But don't let that stop you from having another baby. And he sent me for genetic counseling and that came back fine for the most part. So we tried again. Um, but yeah, no, I, I was scared to death. I, and I thought, and it had to be me because I didn't think it was him. He already had a kid. And so I was petrified. <laughs> but we did so much testing mm -hmm. that I had to say, okay, I'm going to take that answer. Sometimes stuff happens and there is no explanation. And so, tried again, and he was fine, and he was everything that I needed. <laughs> and then I got another one. I don't know where he came from, but I keep him too. <laughs> <laughs> they are and what blessed. they say. God give you double for your troubles. I have been blessed, yeah. and I appreciate it. Amen. Amen. Thank you for sharing, Gloria. For yourself, now I know you had two others, and you've been blessed with more. But as you had those two, how was it? for you to pull your focus because you're grieving. And when, not having lost a child, but knowing that when we grieve, sometimes we want to self-isolate and just keep ourselves, you know, to me. But you had two other children that were needing you. So how do you distinguish, you know, I have to be there for them, but I have to take care and feel how I feel. How did you, how did you adjust, adjust your life to that? I had a lot of help. <laughs> um, family members, um, my girlfriend that I lived with, that, all of them just stepped, stepped, her husband, they all just stepped in. And um, uh, my family lived in Memphis, Tennessee. I was here. Mm -hmm. And uh, um, We went to Memphis every summer. 
and this was March and April. And so um, there was a dear, dear lady, Katie, that just put her arms around me and said, and she was in real estate, and she said, I'm going to find you a home. And she did. And people just stepped in, you know, and just, just did for me. And, and that, um, you know, God says, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. Mm -hmm. And the way that he shows that is through his children. That was shown to me. And, and I, I think I survived I survived the loss, the death, the difficulty, the pain, the hurt. I survived it because there were people, God's children, who just surrounded me. And like I told you, I went to church the day my baby, the, the old, oldest one died. Mm -hmm. I went to Holy Temple Church of God in Christ. And they were um, awesome. They were just awesome. And that's the experience that I, that, you know, that I had. And that's what we, as God's children, do for each other. Amen. It does take a village for us to just, you know, that's part of the reason that we're doing this forum here, because you're giving back. You're sharing your story. Because there's somebody that's going through exactly what you guys have gone mm -hmm. through, either right now or they've gone through it in the past. And it's not everybody heals at the same rate of one another. And I know that people say, you know, time will take care of it. It'll get easier with time. Not so sure. It gets easier. But how, let me ask you this, how has it been for you, Gloria? as far as it's been some years, but love never fades. That's right. And a loss is a loss. It doesn't get easier. It gets, it becomes uh, a part of who you are and you become, you, you're able to handle it and you're able to, uh, to look at it and say, um, God promised and he doesn't break his promises and you learn how to hold on to his unchanging hand you, you learn how even in other situations you learn that I know I can trust God mm -hmm. even if the evidence is not there you know, you can have COVID and be in the hospital and, and, and everything looks bleak and you still can hold on. Amen. You can hold on. And, and, and those, those people who love you are his, represented, mm -hmm. his representatives to those who are hurting. Yeah. Like we're the, his representatives to others who are helping, who, who are hurting. And that's, that's, that's the plan. Mm -hmm. And when we get the plan right, makes it a little easier. Because on this side of Jesus is coming, we're going to have pain. We're going to have loss. We're going to have hurt. We, you know, I have this thing. I say, look, up, look to your left. You know, the Lord, I, this is too hard. I can't mm -hmm. handle this. I don't want this. Mm -hmm. And so then you look to your left, and then you realize, no, you don't want that either. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And then you look to your right, mm -hmm. and that person is going through something horrible. And yeah. no, God lets what comes to you, He allows it to happen because it'll help you grow mm -hmm. or it'll help someone that's around you grow. Amen. I agree. And when that's that, when we realize that, we're in a world of sin, not of his choosing, but he will help us through it. He promises that he'll help us through it. 
And so then, when, when, when it's happening, yes, you hurt. You, it hurts, and, it, and, and, and you go through the hurt. You don't deny the hurt. You don't, you know, it, it hurts, and you live with that. Mm -hmm. Step by step, you live with it. Mm -hmm. I always say sometimes we have to go moment by moment. Yeah. You know, it's not day by day. It's just literally second by second. Exactly. So. And sometimes it's getting me through this moment. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, in the middle of the night, um, when, when, when my house caught on fire, it was early on a Sunday morning that we realized that the house was on fire. And I could hear my children. I was sleeping. I could hear my children. It sounded like they were playing. I'm asleep. They were screaming. Mm. The ones in the, they they were they were um, screaming, and I didn't realize it was screaming until, you know, I said, "Why are they up this early in the morning?" And I sat up, and then I realized it wasn't children squealing with laughter. They were screaming, mm. and. Um, um, that just stays with you, you know, it just stays with you. Because their rooms were, the, the three bedrooms were one behind the other. Mm -hmm. But my bedroom was off the, the living room, the front room. And then if you walk straight back, that was the kitchen. No the dining room, and off the dining room was a hallway with two bedrooms. One bedroom was the girls and one bedroom was the boys. So when they, when, 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 when they, cause the fire started in the very back room, the very back bedroom, when they started coming because the house was on fire, we're in the front, bedroom and didn't know mm. and so I heard that and in my sleep I thought it was children playing and not until I awakened and and got up did I realize that it was screaming and um, um, my four-year-old had gotten out with the two older ones and the baby was in the crib, and she went back to get her sister to help her. And how can a four-year-old help a 15-month-old out of a baby bed, you know, out of a baby crib? But she went back to get her, her baby sister, and they both died. You know, I, I want to ask both of you to take a moment to think of this question. Knowing that someone is watching whose world is no longer the way it was, that they're suffering from that loss. They may or may not have someone that they can confide in. What words of encouragement would you share? What, what words of wisdom that enabled you to make it where you are and to be able to give your story and, and touch someone else, what words would you give them that has worked for you? Study God's word. Because in the word is truth. And to know the truth about the state of the dead, to know the truth about what is heaven? Where is heaven? Who's going to heaven? Is anybody going to? Is there such a thing as heaven? Study God's word because in it is hope and in it is truth and in it is light and in it is understanding and in it is joy and in it is peace. In God's word, yes, you, you appreciate the love of, of of friends and family members, and, and, and yes, were it not for their care and their, their reaching out to you, you would 
have long periods of isolation where you have, you know, time to really wallow in self-pity. Mm -hmm. But when you study the word and you know the answers because you give your heart to the Lord and he says that he, he'll give you perfect peace mm. if your mind is stayed on him. He promises that he will not give you any more than you can bear. Mm -hmm. You know, that, that he will never leave you nor mm -hmm. forsake you. If you, you hold on to that mm -hmm. and it truly works. Okay. It genuinely works. Yes. And the, when, when, when it's in the middle of the night and you wake up, <gasps> because that used to happen mm. quite often. You wake up with that frightening and that scare, but then you hear the Lord saying, it's okay, it's okay, I'm here. And you get through it, Amen. you get through it. Amen. Amen. Thank you. <laughs> you welcome. Thank you. Shakia, I propose that same question to you. What has worked for you? What has enabled you to make it to where you are? What words of wisdom or encouragement would you give to our viewers that, as I said, may be going through the same thing? Um, maybe lean not on your own understanding. Mm -hmm. I think we got to do better with our understanding of death and what that entails. Um, we act like it's the end and kind of it's the beginning. Um, I had to really do like some soul searching and go inward and actually be able to call myself selfish for for my response you know um ultimately there is a whole other thing going on on the other side and just because you can't physically see or touch your loved one does not mean that you cannot feel them and i tried so hard not to feel and it wasn't until I started trying to feel mm -hmm. that I actually started to heal. Okay. So I'm going to say stand in what you are and lean on what you believe and allow that to carry you. Um, and allow yourself to be conscious of those subtle signs, right? Like the day that my mother was buried, it was January in Michigan and it was 70 degrees outside mm -hmm. and it rained and I swear it looked like it was raining glitter. When I had another child and I could see my first baby in him, but he's perfectly healthy. What a blessing, right? Mm -hmm. um, so that, that would be my advice. Feel even the parts that hurt because if you don't, then they turn cancerous when they can turn into healing, because mm -hmm. you have to feel it. But there's something on the other side. Okay. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. I met my husband, Steve, in 1999. We had two miscarriages. And so that was really a trying time for both of us. We found out that we were pregnant with the first sonogram. We found out it was a girl. My daughter's name was Haven Joy. Her name is really uh, synonymous with the time that we were going through. We really asked God to keep her in a safe place, a safe haven. And she brought us joy because we had so much sadness. Six months later, after Haven's born, we go to the doctor for our checkup. He says, you're, you're pregnant. We found out it was a girl, and so we named her Lauren Hope. So we were very happy. So not only did we get one, we got two, and they were daddy's little girls. And we were just a happy, happy family. My husband, Stephen, he's a great dad. I couldn't have asked for a better uh, father for my children. There was no other place that they'd rather be than in their dad's arms. Stephen and my two daughters, Haven and Lauren, plan to spend about two weeks um, visiting their family and the travel to Myrtle Beach. I talked to them every day and they would be very excited and tell me what they were doing and they were just really, really happy. I was out with my sister 
and we got a call. They asked me to give the phone to my sister. I handed the phone and I'm watching her face and it's blank. And so she hangs up the phone and of course she, she hands me the news. Stephen and Haven had gone to him. I remember just screaming, not um, Haven, because she was like, the, the one that I prayed for, she was like the promise. She was, you know, the one that we had prayed for so much and you don't expect the, your gift to be taken away. My conversation with Lauren to tell that their father's passed away and their best friend is gone as well in a moment's notice is, it's heavy. And I walked into the hospital and I walked into a room and Lauren gave me this look like, where have you been? Which, for a mom, is just heart-wrenching. I asked her if she remembered the accident. She told me that we hit a tree. Daddy was bleeding. Haley wouldn't wake up. And so I told her that, that the doctors tried to fix them as best they could, and they couldn't, and that Daddy and Haley had gone. And she looked at me, and she said, but I didn't get to say goodbye. And she started to cry. Of course, I had the why, the I don't understand this God. Each day, obviously, I'm reminded that half my family is gone. And I've had difficult times. I've had times when I've been very, very sad. And the only thing that's got me out of that is praise and saying, God, I thank you. I thank you for allowing me to, to live seven years with my husband. I thank you for a child that was not supposed to be here. I thank you for a promised child. You allowed her, uh, me to see her eyes. You allowed me to see her smile, hear her laugh, hear her say, Mommy. That is a blessing. So although their lives were cut short from mine, I'm humbled by the fact that he would choose me for that experience. I've had the ability to be connected to other women who have lost family members and able to witness to them and talk to them. And, and they been able to say thank you. I appreciate your time and your effort and just your words. I've gone through this with God's grace and with the praise on my lip because I know that somehow he's going to work all this out for my good. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to thank you for tuning in. And most importantly, I'd like to thank both of my guests. I'd like to thank Miss Gloria for sharing her story. And I'd like to thank Miss Shakaya for sharing her story. Well, thanks for having me. And ladies, I, I pray that you will receive a blessing that whoever's watching and listening, that maybe something you heard will start the healing process. And I look forward to seeing you next week, ladies and gentlemen, for Sister to Sisters. You won't want to miss it. It will be the conclusion of our program. And also, I'd like to encourage you to go to fairhavensda.org as well as esdac.org and tune in on Tuesdays, ladies and gentlemen, where we have a safe space program, a forum that allows you to be comfortable in sharing your story. Uh, please log on, see the different groups that we have, ladies and gentlemen. And again, I pray that you have been blessed this evening. I thank you so much and have a beautiful week.